Hi everybody, it's Patricia Coughlin. I wanted to talk to you today about defenses against positive feelings. I think we often assume that patients will only defend and avoid um, what we might call negative feelings. Angry feelings, guilt-laden feelings, grief, sadness. And yet as we help patients work through these kinds of feelings, they often begin to experience really positive feelings. Positive feelings of happiness, of joy, a feeling of power often um, accompanies the experience of anger, sort of strength, power, vitality, aliveness. And this is often followed by some anxiety and pulling down and dampening down. Uh, patients can also in this state feel a good deal of love and feelings of well-being. So we have to try to understand why would someone want to avoid these feelings? And is it just inevitably tied to, again, somehow angry feelings? Right, and guilt-laden feelings. Some people will somehow have that always be reduced to that factor. And yet I have found that there's a way in which this bringing the self down from really positive, expansive feelings is an example of the best defense is a good offense. It's a preemptive strike. So very often we have been shot down when we're open and unguarded and actually feeling really good. Uh, we might be told that um, we shouldn't get too big for our britches or uh, we better watch out for that other shoe to fall. Um, or for somebody to, you know, pop our balloon. And so people learn almost instinctively themselves to back away from and tampen down that positive feeling to keep it from being somehow um, punctured, right, by another. And yes, you can go to feelings toward the other person for having done that, but I think that really there does come to be this association between uh, positive feelings and um, being hurt, disappointed. Um, if you think about it, no emotional state is ever going to remain forever, right? So inevitably, uh, positive feelings will at some point uh, be followed by, you know, sad feelings or something else, right? And yet human beings who are not very good at understanding probability will are often superstitious. So because these two things happen coincidentally in time, we might create a causative link. If I feel too good, right, something bad will happen. And this is what we call superstitious behavior. So I think it is important to recognize this and to help our patients experience and contain having really positive feelings without having to do anything to get rid of them. So I'd love to hear your experience with this, your take on it, and we'll talk next time. Bye-bye.